Okay, so now let me finish this entire setup process. I can open this demo.cpp, which is what I added as my main uh, source code over here. Okay. Now, what you will notice is that I have basically just got a whole bunch of different uh, functions over here. Right. Uh, in fact, today, what I'm going to do is I will not immediately go through and run through all the functions from beginning to end. I will do the first two or three of them, right? And then we'll switch over to another project where we will look at the differential equation uh, code, right? And, uh, you know, uh, compare with how, with what we studied in terms of the scheduling problem over there and how Vivado HLS looks at the same problem. So what am I going to do over here? I'm interested in basically uh, looking at, uh, by the way, I mean, I hope this is readable to most of you, right? I mean, I know that the font size is a little bit small because uh, unfortunately from a big screen, I'm going to, you know, trying to project it onto this. Uh, if there is anything that is unclear, please let me know. For the most part, you don't need to read this code very carefully. And uh, yeah, I can at least increase the font size of the text itself so that you can read the code part of it. Okay. Now, what I need to do if I want to actually, let's say that I want to take this first function int adder int a int b return a plus b. Okay. So what exactly does this mean? Essentially what we are saying is, supposing I had a C function like this, right? Uh, int adder int a int b return a plus b. What happens when I try to compile this, when I try to convert it into software or into hardware, okay? And this process, how do I take a code and compile it is something that we will be sort of taking up in a little bit more detail next, right? How do you compile? Well, I'll not really be talking too much about compilers, but at least the basic compilation process. And, uh, you know, we'll be looking at some optimizations that compilers can use, but the compilation process essentially means that there will be one program which reads through this file, right? letter by letter, it tokenizes it. It basically identifies that int is a you know, keyword that indicates integer. Adder is the name of the function. The parentheses indicate the parameter set. And then, you know, the curly braces indicate the beginning and end of the function. The return indicates what should be returned by the function, etc. right? So the compiler will basically take each of these things and say, okay, now if you wanted this functionality, how would I convert this into an equivalent machine language, right? Equivalent set of instructions in the machine code of the processor. Okay. That is how, for example, a C program is compiled. If I just compile a program and then try running it, I can actually see that it generates assembly language or machine code instructions, which will be run by the processor. In our case, the compiler is going to do something different. It is still going to read through this file. It's going to understand, you know, break it up into all these components, function names, keywords, uh, return values, th things of that sort. But the output that it generates is not going to be machine language or assembly language. It's going to be something, a list of modules that are connected to each other in such a way that those list of modules generate the same output as whatever this function that we have written over here. Okay. So if I just gave you this code, right, int adder, int a, int b, and return a plus b, and said, can you think of a piece of hardware which would give me the same functionality? What do you think would be generated as the result? Essentially, the functionality that we want is that it should add to 32-bit numbers because int is a 32-bit, uh, int is sort of declared as a, defined as a 32-bit value in C, right? So what we are trying to do, it looks like is add to 32 bit values. Okay. Now, how exactly do the, does the addition take place? It could be, you know, uh, you use pull adders, which is probably the most uh, likely solution. How does the full adder in turn get implemented? Yes, that would probably use XOR gates and so on, right? Now, as far as FPGAs are concerned, things are slightly different, right? I will not use pull adders or uh, XOR gates directly. Because FPGAs, it turns out, have also got some optimized hardware which allows them to do addition more efficiently. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is, Vivado HLS doesn't even go that far. It does not directly try to target the FPGA as such. So it will basically say, okay, can I generate an equivalent Verilog which will give me this result? 
okay in order to see what that will be what i'm going to do is just go to the project settings select select adder as the top function and tell it to synthesize okay this green there's a green button over there that i click on it it synthesizes right you can see that it basically generates some messages down here okay and at the end of it it generates something called a synthesis report for adder okay it gives you a lot of information one of them is a performance estimate which basically says this is the timing estimate our target time period was 10 nanoseconds right so this ap underscore clk now think about it right my code over here does not mention a clock okay so in my original c code there is no concept of a clock this is not very log code i have not got any passage clock or any such thing written in it where did this clock come from okay what happens is that vivado hls by default assumes that you are trying to implement something which has some kind of a clock to start it and is doing some kind of handshaking with its inputs and outputs okay which is why it brings in this clock and then talks about the estimated clock period okay now the next thing the latency you look at the latency and you will see that you know it's giving zero right that seems strange what does it mean to have a zero latency and the answer is zero latency essentially means that this entire thing has got synthesized as a combinational logic okay that's all that it basically refers to there is further detail in terms of instance and loop and so on an instance would be if the code that you have written internally it contains some other functions which themselves got synthesized as separate verilog modules here there is nothing it's such a very trivial code right it's just a adder so nothing happens there are no loops either in this code go down here and it actually gives you detailed utilization estimates and you can see that you know there are no block rams used in this design no dsp slices in fact no flip flops okay so then it sort of raises the question why was this ap clk there why did you need an ap clock if there are no flip flops in the circuit okay the answer is that when there are no flip flops it basically takes the longest combinational path and tells you okay this is the that is what this delay 2.7 nanoseconds corresponds to and as you can see it actually uses 39 lookup tables right where is this number coming from 32 of them are part of the addition right 32 of the lookup tables are used in order to add the two 32 bit values together and uh, the remaining seven bits are probably some kind of logic extra logic here and there right that uh, I mean, I, I do, don't really have a good explanation for it right now. You'll have to look at how it got synthesized in order to find out what happened over here, right? We can also go down further. And finally, this last part, the interface is also something that's interesting, right? You'll see that there are two signals here, A and B, which are 32-bit inputs, which is what we expect, right? That's what we have tried to add. There is something called AP return, which is a 32-bit output. But then there are a whole bunch of other signals. There is AP start, AP done, AP idle, and AP ready. Okay. What are all of these signals? Like I told you, they are handshaking signals. They are used to sort of indicate that, yes, this module is ready to add. You can give it a start signal. And once it is done, it will give you a done signal. Okay. Now, for a circuit like this, which is so trivial, it doesn't even have a clock, these signals are actually a little bit misleading. Right? It sort of gives the impression that you are able to control the adder by telling it when it can start addition and so on. But in reality, there is no way you can actually take a combinational circuit and tell it when to start. In order to have that thing that, you know, there is something based on which you will control whether the addition is happening or not, there has to be a clock or a memory or a state, uh, you know, a memory module which can basically hold state before it can do something useful. In solution one, under synthesis, you can basically go into Verilog and open the code that it generated okay so you can see that you know it starts off with a few comments very good it also has a time scale yeah all nice very long uh, thing the module adder so far it looks very nice right it has all of these input output declarations and so on and in this particular case you look at the entire code and you know it is very simple very trivial easy to understand the most important line is this one assign ap return equal to b plus a 
okay so what has happened this entire vivado hls that i talked about has actually done nothing it has taken something in c and converted it into an equivalent plus statement in verilog okay so this was a very trivial thing to do the reason it was able to do that of course was because verilog has this capability of taking addition and then the verilog compiler in turn will figure out whether to use pull adders or uh, uh, fpga lookup tables or something else in order to actually do the addition right so keep that in mind the vivado hls its job is to take the c code and convert it into something which has all the you know the state uh, information captured in it and also you know uh, if necessary it, it uh, breaks the computation into multiple clock cycles and so on okay uh, but the actual converting it into hardware the mapping to technology will be done by the vivado which is the tool that actually takes verilog and converts it into hardware the other thing you can see is what is uh, ap done in this case it basically says ap done equal to ap start meaning that as soon as you tell me to start i am done in the same clock cycle what is ap id once again in this particular example it is irrelevant which is why they have just set it permanently to 1 right there is no clock cycle during which this module is idle it is always ready to work as soon as you give start it is busy and when you uh, when it is done it basically races done so there is no point in sort of saying that it is not idle it can never be not idle for a given clock cycle 